So my speech today is in honor of Saba. So today is a day that came faster than I think we all thought it would. It feels like just yesterday we were all suited up in helmets and life jackets for our whitewater rafting orientation. Even farther than that, it may feel like just yesterday there were only 33 of us in the freshman class. Since freshman year, we have almost doubled in size, making us the largest graduating class since the 90s. And you know what that means. Everything is probably going to fall apart once we leave. <laughs> this change for the school will be bittersweet. On the one hand, after we leave, the coaches are going to be at a loss as to how to fill the big shoes we will have left behind. The administration won't know what to do them with themselves without the strong leadership presence on campus. The teachers will be losing children they may have raised since freshman year. It will be very drastic and upsetting. But on the other hand, we're out of here, so we're really pumped. <laughs> First, I want to talk a little bit about my own journey here. I have personally experienced the difference a private school education can make, both academically and socially. Academically, I struggled a lot in public school. In elementary and middle school, I was significantly behind my classmates in all sectors of education, and this concerned my parents. Like many people with learning disabilities, academic struggles became a focal point of my childhood. I began seeing a tutor when I was in second grade, and after five years of working together, Robin became a family friend. However, just because we were close didn't mean I made it easy for her. There were many times I would sit at her kitchen table and pout or even cry with frustration at the work in front of me. I saw <coughs> academic advisors and got testing done to establish what I needed in order to be comfortable and successful in school. However, my public school was simply not equipped to accommodate my needs. Left hanging at a certain point, I simply gave up trying to understand new material. I frequently threw my hands up and eventually accepted that I would never be successful in the way that I aspired to be. However, in ninth grade, I made a decision. It sounds cliche and silly, but it is very true. I simply decided that I would be better. I decided that I would work hard enough so that academics might someday come easily to me. That I would embrace challenges instead of run from them. I decided that I would eventually become a competitive student and that I would end up at my dream college as a result of my hard work, and that is what I did. I used my freshman year as a catch-up where I challenged myself and worked tirelessly to learn about work ethic and academic skills. I came out on the other side with an obsessive collection of planners and notebooks, a strong work ethic, and a love for news and knowledge. This journey led me to CHCH, and it was here that I was able to take advantage of my new academic confidence. Not only did CHCH give me the private school support I needed in order to succeed academically, it also gave me a place where I could make my own voice. If any of you have been within a half mile of me, you know that I'm loud. I'm talkative, opinionated, maybe a little bossy. In public school, these were all traits that I was embarrassed to have. There, I felt as though who I was, an outspoken girl, was not who I was meant to be. I remember frequently getting shut down for being too talkative. However, I remember noticing that when the boys were being loud and bossy, no one judged them the way they did me. It was not until CHCH that I realized that I was meant to be talkative. I realized that I wasn't loud, I just had things to say. Yeah. I realized that my fear of being bossy had transformed into my desire to be a boss. Uh, okay. Here, I learned that being upfront and having strong opinions is not a negative personality trait. In fact, I realized that as women, we are almost obligated to be strong-willed and passionate about our interests, politics, and who we are. It is for these reasons that I will be eternally grateful that my parents were able to make a private school education attainable for me. Now, students, you can pay attention because I'm going to start talking about you. I believe that we as a class had the most fun. We all looked the best at prom, whether wearing a Batman suit, a Space Man suit, or formal wear. We had awesome senior presentations consisting of Rubik's Cubes, hacks for hungry, hungry hippos, and strange drink concoctions. Families, you just had to be there. I've actually heard that our senior presentations were so extraordinary and innovative that C 
seniors will now be given restrictions on what they can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things I want to remember from my time here. I want to remember my AP Gov study session this Saturday before our exam. There's nothing that preps you for a test better than mildly spicy Costco chicken wings, Kahoot test, test, and McPhail finally saying something encouraging. <laughs> We've seen each other through physical obstacles, torn ACLs, because most sick, Melanson is essentially one of us, broken bones, hey Gus, watch out for that bench, watch out for that bench. Um, one lost and then recovered front tooth, sorry, and also congratulations, Mr. <laughs> and a few head injuries on the way, which will now be referred to as the concussion epidemic of 2017. <laughs> on a serious note, we've, wa we've watched larger obstacles come into full view. I want to acknowledge Malachi's senior presentation as one of the most memorable and impactful <laughs> Thank you. 